In this episode, we're going to do a little bit of a post-mortem on this. What am I talking about? Well, stick with me because we're going to jump into this together and I'm going to explain. Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to do a little bit of a post-mortem on this. What is this? Well, you might recall from an episode I did a short while ago about the failure of my eBay K40 laser resulting in some very spectacular high voltage arcs. This is the cause of it. This is the laser tube. Now, before I get into that, I want to talk a little bit about how this tube works and how a laser tube works in general so you kind of understand what failed and why what happened did. So first off, this tube is basically an arc lamp, if you will. So there's an anode here and down at the other end, which you can't see is a cathode. So what happens is about 20 to 25,000 volts goes in here. It arcs through a gas inside of here and reaches the cathode and that creates basically an arc lamp. Now what happens is that lasers the gas in the tube and that light bounces back and forth between two mirrors before it exits a permeable mirror out the other end generating coherent light which then moves to your laser head now with that being said you could kind of think of this like a big neon tube if you will however it produces basically infrared light rather than optical light and it produces a fair amount of it and that's why it needs to be water cooled as all this gets very hot now, what happened in this case is the anode down here, I believe, and I don't know if you can see it through the glass. I'll try zooming in. In person, you can kind of see it. It's separated from the post, so this could no longer laser or create the arc across the tube. So basically what happened is it built up a huge amount of potential energy on the post and it had to discharge somewhere. Now, I thought it was kind of interesting. I've had laser tubes fail on me before. However, I've never had the spectacular arcing as I did in this case, which is one of the big things I wanted to share with you, the viewers, as a risk to the CO2 laser. Now, the thing is, I was wearing protective eyewear and everything, as you always should when dealing with these. Do not trust you know, any type of tool, and especially an eBay K40 laser. There are tons and tons of risks with these devices. Now, I'm not trying to knock them as a hobby device. I have several of them. I've used them for several years, but I always use them with caution, and that's what I really want to stress here with you guys. Use these with caution, all the way from the water pump, the cheap Chinese water pump that you're putting 110 volts into the bucket of water with, to the fact that this is an infrared laser of high power you can see and will blind you instantly, to basically it can stop your heart with this kind of voltage. Now, a lot of people write me, because I've done other videos on this, saying, hey, current kills, voltage doesn't. And I'm going to call BS on that. There is more than enough voltage here to stop your heart. Basically, high voltage will stop your heart, can cause all sorts of physical damage to your body. Current typically burns you, but voltage can also kill you too. So it's a matter of which way you would like to die. So respect this. Respect this a lot. I know two people personally who've died of electrocution. It is not a fun way to go. And that is part of the reason that I make these videos to demonstrate to you guys to be safe. Because if I help save one person out there, that's one more person that's alive today. So I'm really hoping that these videos are used in that manner. They're not meant to scare you. They're meant to educate you. Now, I had another viewer write and say, well, why don't you teach people how to you know, prevent this? You cannot prevent this. I did not expect this. I've had laser tubes fail before, as I mentioned, and I've never had this happen. So you always have to assume the worst and prepare for the worst with safety. And that is another reason, and I've stressed it in a prior video, and I get a lot of comments on that video still to this day from two years back, about having an appropriate earthen ground to this. You must have an earthen ground. Do not rely on a three-pronged plug. Have an earthen ground for this. Now, I don't mean for this whole thing to be a PSA. However, I do mean for it to be a bit of an educational lesson to learn from this in case you experience this. Now, the other piece I want to talk about, some good discussion came up regarding this. You know, oh, if this happens, the circuit break is going to blow, or oh, you should have a GFI or ground fault interrupter. Well, I got news for you folks. I had both on this. So this is connected to a GFI. Uh, and number two, it is into a brand new breaker, electromagnetic thermal breaker. So I've gone in building this new shop. 
Uh, again, I have experience building large scale data centers. I know a lot about electricity. So I built this with these safety considerations in mind. However, one of the things to keep in mind, this laser electrically performed as it should. So no breaker nor the GFI kicked out. Why is that? Basically, you have a power supply, and I've made a very simple drawing over here. So you have 110 volts going in, and you have basically 20 to 25,000 going out. This is a high voltage flyback transformer that's in this laser. Now, everything on this side on the 110 appeared just fine to the circuit breaker and the GFI. Everything that happened was isolated over here on the high voltage side. This is why the breaker nor ground fault interrupter kicked out even though I was arcing basically 20,000 volts to ground. It didn't know it. It was simply supplying power and I did not overdrive the input stage of this to kick out the breaker nor the GFI. So do not have a false sense of security that a breaker or a ground fault interrupter is going to save you from something like this. It will not. This will occur. So with that being said, hopefully I've explained this a little bit. I've replaced the tube since and the unit is working just fine. And again, I really mean this to be a learning experience for the entire community out there to, you know, number one, understand what can happen and number two, respect it and address it with safety. So with that, hopefully you found it interesting. If you did, smash the like button, swag shops up there, subscribes over there, and we'll catch you in the next video where we do something else cool. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.